Hello Tiger and Lady Tiger fans, welcome to another edition of Insights U Sports. I'm your host Jordan Alves. Can you believe it? Spring is here, we're already getting closer to the end of the regular season for men's and women's basketball. Joining us on the show today to start us off is the head coach of Lady Tigers, Ginger Colvin. And coach, uh, you're coming off a week where you, you lost to Shawnee State, mm -hmm. a big loss to Shawnee yep. State, and then you come back. Uh, you yep. played really well in the second half against Georgetown, mm -hmm. moving into the final conference uh, game, the regular season game. Can you believe the conference tournament is a week away almost? No, I cannot. It's, in some ways, it seems like, and I think it's this way every year, it seems like it's just been so long, and in some ways, it's just been the blink. So it's, uh, you know, and you get to this point in the season, it's it's tough to believe that you're getting ready to, your seniors are going to play their yep. last game. And uh, But it's it's been a good season. It's been a tough season, I think, mentally on us. And physically, it always is physically, but I think losing Leanne and uh, trying to re regroup after that was, yeah. was tough on us. But the kids have done a pretty good job. Last Thursday, you go to Shawnee State, mm -hmm. uh, a rowdy environment, fans, students, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that rivalry that's been created between Camels and yep. Shawnee State the last, I would say, what, three or four or five years? Um, yeah, and probably Coach Nick so, has done yeah. a pretty good job mm -hmm. with uh, elevating Shawnee State to one of the top oh, teams yeah. in the conference. You know, he, uh, Coach the Robin was there before, yeah. did an outstanding job. She won national tournaments in the NAA D2. Um, it was a D2 school for years, but they could compete with any D1 school out there. As a matter of fact, even when Coach Wise was still coaching, we would go up there and play. But uh, uh, he's come in. He's done a great job. They're, they're competitive every single year. And, uh, yeah, I'd say rivalry-wise for the kids that I have coached, it's probably Shawnee. And uh, they've they've got a very good team. I think a lot better team than they had last oh, last yeah. season. And uh, we just um, we went up the first half. I thought competed the first half, and then just kind of laid down the second half and didn't compete. In a 92-73 loss mm -hmm. to the Bears, ranked number five in the country. Lindsey Wilson was number two. Mm -hmm. You have two of the or three of the top uh, teams in the Mid South Conference in the top nine uh, during last week's poll. Mm -hmm. You are at number nine. Shawnee at five. Right. Lindsey Wilson at two. You know, we dropped, and uh, I was disappointed in the fact that we dropped. We shouldn't have. After winning, after right. not losing. We, um, and the, 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 I think the Raiders looked, and Baker uh, is leading their league, so they bumped them yeah. above us, which is, you know, I, I, we've lost to number two twice, and we've lost to number five twice, we've lost to number six once. And uh, we've played a really tough schedule, so I'm really disappointed in the fact that we did drop. I feel like we're a top-ten team. Um, the Lindsey Shawnee game Thursday, I think, will be a national final yep. type game. Uh, I've watched a lot of basketball. I've watched a lot of these teams play. I don't know that there's many better than Lindsey and Shawnee. Uh, Freed Hardman is an uh, outstanding team, very, very well coached. Dale Neal will have his team prepared against oh, yeah. anybody. But uh, talent wise, you know, those two teams, I think, can stack up with anybody. And then you move into Saturday, Georgetown College. Mm -hmm. you, you started really slow in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your mo or your message at halftime uh, going no. into that, that second half? <clears throat> you know, a lot of people said, well, what did you say at halftime? And I, I didn't. I didn't feel a sense of urgency. Uh, we played Thursday. Yeah. We were deflated from Thursday. And Sean, or Georgetown didn't no, play. No, everybody we've played plays us fresh. And, uh, every, every, you know, those Saturday games is somebody that's normally set from Monday to Saturday, has not played on Thursday. And uh, they were fresh. It was their senior day. And we, um, I, like I say, the first half, they just hit shots. And that zone that we play, uh, the one thing about it is you're going to give up some open threes. And um, even if you give up some open threes early, you have to stand there and take it. You have to stand there and go through that because our, our philosophy is you start rushing things and you start all, you know, you, you kind of get out of kilter with what you're doing and you just have to stand the course. And we did. And I felt like they hit a lot of shots early. Um, but I feel like, you know, our, our kids just, just stood the course. I, they came out. We didn't score. Emily didn't shoot the ball yeah. well. Uh, so we weren't shooting the ball well. It wasn't as much as we were defending really poorly. We just didn't score much. And uh, Jordan Dorham was in foul trouble. She was scoring pretty much at will when she was in the game. So uh, I felt good about it. I felt good if we could just get down to that, you know, third quarter mark, about halfway through the third yeah. quarter. And we did, and um, you know, I thought played well. 74-57 win at mm -hmm. Georgetown. You talk about uh, later on in games is when your team really shines. The third mm -hmm. and fourth quarter, yep. you use that twilight zone defense, and it just wears down teams because you're running up and down the court the whole mm -hmm. time, and you're using that zone defense to, to create offense. Yeah, and you know, I think teams can really focus for maybe a half because they're not running anything they've been accustomed mm -hmm. to running, and they may hit a few shots early, but then after you go through it and you go through it and you go through it and, and we change a few things up. We don't run it the exact same way the entire game. So all we want them to be rushed. 
And uh, if we can keep them rushed and just keep them out of their rhythm, we feel real confident with it. Moving into Saturday, Senior Day. Mm. Uh, it's a big a big game for you, Life University, yep. 2 p.m. tip-off. Senior Day starts at 2.01 is what we decided, so right. we can cover it here on uh, Comcast Channel 10, WLCU TV, and radio. Uh, but you have five seniors, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Emily Fox, Abby Miller, Alexis Pester, Q Pradas, and then you have Leanne Greider. Right. Talk about those five seniors and what they mean to this program. Um, you know, we, we, we brought in Lexi uh, Pester last year, and I think Lexi has come in, and, and I, I know this sounds really tough, but she's one of the best practice players we have. She is, she is gritty, she's involved in every game, and she's been a big, big contribution to us this season. And you look at her stats and think, well, she's not playing in very many games, she's not doing very much, but she's been a big contributor. And she's the one on the bench that's always cheering yes. into the game as well. Yes, and she's into it. She's, she's suggesting things. As a matter of fact, at halftime Georgetown uh, Saturday, when I got to the locker room, she was already on the whiteboard. She was already showing how they were going up against their twilight zones. She's very involved and we're, uh, she's a great teammate to have. Uh, Q we brought in this year, uh, she gives us, gives us a lot of size. It's been a tough adjustment, and, uh, but she still gives us everything that she has every single day. And, um, you know, we talk about, obviously, seniors. Emily transferred in, but, but she's been with our program now for two and a half years. And she's been just phenomenal for us. Um, just a, a great kid on the floor, great kid off the floor, best best shooter I've ever coached, and that says a lot. She is she is uh, she's been fun to watch, and she's been big for us. And we're we're so glad that that she that she chose us. Um, Abby Miller, we call her the old woman of the team, fifth year <laughs> senior, and uh, she's been through a lot and watched a lot. And um, you know, you, you sit and look at Abby, and Abby knows this. She can't jump. She can't shoot. Uh, she, she's just not gifted in a lot of those ways, but if, if we take Abby out of our lineup, I don't know how many games we win. Yeah. Um, she is Campbellsville University. She is what our kids represent. She's a, a kid that comes in and just gets it done and does the dirty work, and uh, I'm so proud of her. And then Leanne, I wish her senior day had gone differently, uh, but uh, we looked at her uh, win-loss percentage as a starter, and I think it's 81, 82%. Can't beat that. Yep, and uh, she's... She didn't go out, I think, thinking, well, I could have done more, I could have done this. She, she's she been in the big ones, and uh, she's been a part of a conf two conference championship teams, a conference tournament championship team, a Final Four team, and a, and a national tournament final team, and she played all but seven minutes in that five-game span. Um, she would have finished second all-time, I think, assist, mm -hmm. no problem with – with that if she would have played, but uh, she's going to be third all time on the list and she's just a, she's a winner. That's you, all you can say about Lee. You talk about Lee and Abby both. Uh, Abby's the five year senior, but mm -hmm. Lee, uh, those two have been here from the start. Right. Uh, they win Saturday, the winningest program, tying the winningest, winningest right. team in, in history in four years, uh, going back to last year, Chris, mm -hmm. or, uh, Christian Jacob Lindsay Bird. Yeah, and that's saying a lot too. That's, yep. uh, I think, what, 117? Yes. 117 wins, that's a lot. Um, that's that says a lot about your kids, a lot about your program, um, and this year I think, yes, this year will be um, their four years. We will only have single digit losses in yes. each of those years. Well, that may be five. I'm not sure if if Abby's freshman year was that or not. But saying single digit losses in the Mid South Conference and with the schedule we played, that says a lot about those kids. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time this week. Uh, good luck on Saturday. Thank I know you. it'll be an emotional day for you, but mm -hmm. uh, moving into the conference tournament, we'll have you on next week. And talk having about that. Whitney Ballinger back. That's yes, right. Uh, we're we, excited about we'll, that as we'll. We'll talk well. about that a little bit later. Good so, deal. Coach, we appreciate the time. Once again, the Lady Tigers, they host Life University. Uh, senior day starts at 2 p.m., 2.01 actually, on the CU Sports Network on WLCU TV and Comcast 10. Jay Turner and Matt Payton will have the call on WLCU TV and also 88.7 The Tiger. When we come back, we're going to transition to the men's side. Coach Brent Vernon is going to join us and talk about their seniors as well in the three-game win streak that the Tigers are on. Stay with us here on Inside CU Sports. Campbellsville Baptist Church, a church building kingdom community through small groups, kids ministry, youth ministry, and worship. At Campbellsville Baptist Church, we're dedicated to sharing the love of God because God's love changes the world. Join us on Sundays for worship at 9 and 11 and small group Bible study at 10. Located on North Central Avenue and on the web at CampbellsvilleBaptistChurch.com. Citizens Bank & Trust knows just how hectic your day can be. Stay on track during your busiest days with Citizens Bank & Trust. Buying the latest gear to support your favorite team. Or grabbing a coffee after studying all night. 
Citizens Bank allows you to deposit your checks with the snap of a picture at any time, especially after hours. Citizens Bank and Trust, keeping you on schedule. Now introducing Apple, Android, and Google Pay. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back into Inside CU Sports. Joined now by the head coach of the Tigers, Brent Vernon. The Tigers are coming in, coach, a 3-0 win streak or three-game win streak. Uh, we talked about it uh, maybe since the first, second, third week of the season that you've been able to come in after uh, winning every game in the week. And uh, it's a good, good time to be getting it right going into conference tournament play. It is, and our guys have been doing a good job like we've sort of talked about stay in the course and continue to get better in practice and it's sort of what we've been telling our guys sooner or later I felt like the ball was going to bounce our yeah. way and it finally has and we've gotten a little momentum going and again we would like to be in a different position than what we're in as we move forward towards the last game of conference tournament but we're not and our guys have accepted it and we're trying to gain the momentum at the right time right now. 87-69 win at Shawnee State on last Thursday uh, it was a big win for you you pulled away late probably about uh, 12 minutes to go in the second half uh, you pulled away, and that was a big win going into Thursday or going into Saturday. Huge win, and, and in reality, we've won some games on the road, but they've been neutral games. That yep. was our first, first true, true road, road win, and, and it's hard for me as a coach to say that because you want to get that a lot earlier. But again, uh, we've played some good teams, and Shawnee, you know, they've beaten some really good teams. Had previously beaten Georgetown. That might have been their biggest loss at home yep. this year. One of the toughest teams in our league to play on the road well coached by Coach Hamilton, just does a great job of always having his guys prepared. And our guys did a really good job defensively and making shots. And then you go into Georgetown, another uh, great rivalry game for the program. Number six Georgetown, 77-76 win on the road. You pick up two straight road conference wins, and that, that, was huge, that was huge for you. It was huge, and it goes back to I was really worried going into that game from fatigue. You know, we spent all day Thursday traveling and then playing and Friday traveling back home. So we had little time to prepare where Georgetown hadn't played in a week. And then, but again, our first half wasn't real good. You could see a little bit of fatigue and tired legs. Our mind wasn't mentally sharp. And then at halftime, we got in and we really locked in. And you saw our, our defensive percentage go from, they shot 53 in the first half to 31 in the second half. And, and it carried over into last night's game. And again, it's just been a really good job to see our guys continue to battle and stay the course. You talked about it right when you were hired. Uh, your dad ran the tough defenses back in the day, how you want to turn your defense into offense. That's what you did at Georgetown. Is that what you preached at halftime going into that halftime break? It was. And again, our best offense this year has come whenever we've gotten defensive stops and we don't play in transition. We have, we have a lot of shooters. We get Jalen, who's very fast with the ball yep. in transition and breaking defenses down. And you could see it against Shawnee. You could see it against Georgetown. And you could see it against Wilberforce earlier in the week. You talk about Wilberforce, 88-63 win. You pick up three straight road wins. You go into another hostile environment. Didn't really know what to expect. Uh, no phone line for radio. Right. The music was crazy. It was their senior day. They're a very athletic team. You were able to shut them down throughout the, the majority of the game. We were, and you know, again, you said it, it was three straight senior nights we went into yeah, and, yeah. and sort of spoiled right there. And, and, and it was their last game of the year, and their seniors were wanting to go out on a high note, and it was a good crowd. And we really didn't know what to expect. You know, we had a great game with them at our place early in the year and came out on top, so we knew they'd be ready. Uh, we had a good halftime lead, and we came out sluggish to start the second half. And again, with all the traveling, three games in five days, I worried about that. And with about 60 minutes ago, Mark, we called a timeout and just talked about, you know, guys, this is where the mental – a part has to come yeah. into play because if we're going to talk about going to Frankfurt and trying to win three games in three days, this is the same thing. This is, you know, it's actually you've gotten a little more break than you'll get there. And the next thing you know, we go on a 17-2 run. We score 50 points over the last 15 minutes, and our guys really locked in. But it started with our defense that led to our offense. You talk about uh, Wilberforce was able to cut the lead to four, 38-34, with a few minutes gone in the second half. And then Jalen Coates or Hagen Tyler, they scored, I think, 25 of their of their combined points in the second half. Jalen got to the rim, was able to create shots for others. Zach Perry hit a couple threes. Byron Dean hit three threes last night. Hagen finally got going in the, in the later stages of the second half. That was huge for you going into the conference tournament. Yeah, and Jalen did a really good job. Jalen, you know, didn't struggle in the first half, but didn't finish as well as he had been. Second half, he went 6-6. Six of six. Hagen got great looks the whole game, and everything was coming up short, and that was just legs. And then finally he got one to go, and you could see the confidence. 
Byron made two threes in the first half and then came in and made a third in the second. And Zach made back-to-back. -back, and I think Zach's second three extended the lead to around 23 yeah, or 24. 25, actually. And again, whenever we did that, as it's, it's contagious. Yeah. And if you see our last few games, we've shot great percentages. And it's been after you make a few, everybody starts feeling better about it. And that's what happened yesterday. Now you move into Saturday. <coughs> it's a big win or a big game for you. Uh, Coach Atkins comes back. Life University, they're already clinched the regular season. Uh, it's senior day. E.K., Eric Kenny, Rod Lawrence, Zach Perry, Elliot Young. Your four seniors on the team right now. And, and it's really uh, it, – E.K. and Rod came back after last season after not playing uh, – Rod played one game. Zach Perry, uh, he's been the guy that uh, hasn't really got a lot of playing time, but he's really shined at times this year and even had a couple big games last year. Elliot Young's the lone four-year senior on the team that's really uh, stuck it through, a thousand-point club guy. And uh, those four seniors mean a lot to the program. They do, and they mean a lot to me. Um, you know, we, we want to have a family-type atmosphere, and those guys are, are absolutely a part of my family. And when I got the job, they all four, whenever I made the phone call and, and, and let them know that I was hired, you know, it was, I think, up in the air for all of them on what they were going to do with their yeah. future. And they all trusted me that they wanted to come back to Campbellsville, and it meant a lot to me. And again, it doesn't, nobody is more than the other. You know, Elliot being here four years, you know, he, he exemplifies what it is about Campbellsville University. You look at Zach Perry, who every year he's been a part of our varsity program, has had his, his shine, shining moments. And this year, you know, he went through a rough stage early being sick and just couldn't find his groove. And then the last two and three weeks, Man, he, he's really helped us get over the top. He was huge at Shawnee, Georgetown. He's just been really good and solid. And, and, he, and he's figured out at the right time what he had to do to get out there and help us. Rod and EK, you know, they both had their ups and downs this year. Rod would love to be playing better overall. But again, last night, or against Wilberforce the other day, he came through and had a really good stat line. And, and he was, uh, he's figuring it out a lot more of what we're asking. And then EK, it took him a while from the injury last year, all through first semester to get get his stamina back, and, and once he has, everybody's seen just how special of a player he is. Now talking about the actual life game really quick, about a minute left. Um, Delarian Williams, best player in the conference, hands down. He's probably going to be named player, uh, player of the year in the conference. Um, Coach Atkins has really done well the last, uh, I would say, what, a month and a half, two yeah. months after um, he got his players as point guard back. He got a post back we've talked about, and uh, they're going to be really good. But what does this game mean going into the conference tournament? It's just to try to keep the momentum going. You know, we, we told our guys, and, and you know, you have all these sayings, two games of win streak, three games in a row winning is a habit. And, and habits form over time, and, and we're developing the right habits. Life is the hardest team in the conference to guard. Since we played them, and it's been a month and a half ago, they shot 41% against three against us. And since then, they've shot better than 41% from three every game but one. Hardest team to guard, Delarian Williams, obviously player of the year. We'll have our work cut out for us, but it's just huge for us as we move towards the conference tournament. Coach, we appreciate the time as always, and good luck next week. We'll, we'll hope to have you on before the conference tournament, kind of look at who you all play, talk about the bracket, talk about the seedings and, and stuff like that. So Thanks we appreciate the time and good luck this week. Appreciate it. Once again, the Tigers and the Lady Tigers, they host Life University, a doubleheader starting at 2 p.m. Eastern time right here on these same stations, 88.7 The Tiger. WLCU TV and Comcast Channel 10. It'll be senior day for the Tigers and Lady Tigers and also the cheerleading programs will have those recognitions. For all the updates and all the information, you go to CampbellsvilleTigers.com for the updates on when those senior day activities will be taking place. When we come back, we're in transition to Lady Tigers softball. The Lady Tigers got in action this past weekend in the Southern Challenge. And then also they, they, are, they are hosting Taylor University and also Olivet Nazarene on Friday and Saturday. So stay with us here on Inside CU Sports. Campbellsville University Cosmetology teaches beauty inside and out. The cosmetology students at CU receive salon experience while learning in a contemporary environment from faculty who have worked in the industry. With areas of study ranging from hairstyling to salon management, Campbellsville University Cosmetology can help you turn your passion into a profession. Kickstart your cosmetology career today. Visit campbellsville.edu slash cosmetology. Active reading is worldwide. Whether you're sitting at home or enjoying nature with your favorite book, Dog-Eared Books is here for you. Located on East Main Street in Campbellsville, Dog-Eared Books has a wide variety for all your reading needs. Find your favorite author or search your favorite genre. Stay up to date with all our extra events on social media at Dog-Eared Books KY and also dogeareddbooksky.com. Dog-Eared Books, because books are a man's best friend. 
Welcome back into Inside CU Sports, the last segment for tonight. And we transition now to Lady Tigers softball. Coach Shannon Walton joining us for the first time this year. And Coach, uh, uh, softball's already here. Spring's already here. You already got six games underneath your belt at the Southern Challenge in Bluffton, uh, or I guess Hardyville, uh, South Carolina. And it was a big weekend for you to kind of get going, get some rust uh, knocked off. Uh, three and three record. It wasn't the outcome you wanted in, in those six ball games, but uh, talk about opening weekend a little bit with us. You know, I think uh, we were just excited to really get started and uh, get on the field and kind of see where we stood. Uh, you know, that was a tough um, opener, um, you know, for six games and, um, you know, with some, with some great teams there. Um, you know, I thought we played, you know, at times well, uh, and then at times, you know, just some things that we need to work on. So I thought, you know, we were able to really learn a lot about ourselves and, and see where we stood uh, early. So that's always a good thing. And uh, the weather was great. Uh, USCB did a great job hosting the Southern Challenge. And this is the first year that we've had that tournament. So there we uh, did four conferences, unlike uh, the basketball, and uh, the top two conference, okay. top two teams from each conference uh, were there participating. So, um, you know, there were uh, probably four or five ranked teams there. And uh, it was just a good opportunity to get on the field and kind of kind of go ahead and look and see where we stand. And is that something that's going to carry on over year? Is that what's expected right now? Uh, that's what I've been told. I, I'm not real sure what the future holds with it, um, but it you know it is a it is a great way for us to get games uh, and to get solid games yeah. and, uh, to play against good teams. You talk about the schedule and and coming from uh, you played under Coach Wise, who always had a tough schedule. Uh, you and Coach Calvin, really good friends as well. And uh, the women's basketball team always plays a tough schedule. That's, that's kind of been enshrined in you as well with softball. You always play a really tough schedule to start the year. How does that, uh, I guess, kind of uh, counteract with an early season tough schedule? Uh, you kind of take some bumps along the road uh, earlier in the year. I, I directly attribute that to playing for Coach Wise and, and Ginger. Uh, we're both coaches when I played. So, um, you know, I like to see where we stand. I like to put our kids in tough situations and, um, you know, get prepared for, for conference games uh, as we get further down the road. And, you um, you know, I think it's important to, to learn a little bit more about our team and, you know, how tough we are yeah. and, uh, you know, just what we have and, and you know, just kind of uh, where we need to develop and continue to get better. You talk about the development and where you need to get better defensively. You kind of struggled this week. You had 13 errors on the defensive side. Uh, what is it uh, just about the defense? This year you don't have Victoria Decker in the circle. Uh, obviously, she was more of a pitch-to-contact pitcher. She wasn't a huge strikeout pitcher. Uh, but the defense has been solid for you the last few years. Obviously, early on, it's not where you want it to be. What was it th this past weekend that, that was a little bit down for you on the defensive side? You know, I think it, some of it's just growing pains and, and trying to figure some things out. I, I thought a lot of the errors were kind of forced errors, um, not hard hit balls. Um, you know, we outfield, and we've talked about this, we dove for two balls that, you know, we really had no business diving for, and then our relays in weren't great. So I think that's a direct tribute to, you know, communication. Uh, we got a couple freshmen that are starting, getting some, getting quite a few innings, um, and then uh, we had a little bit of an injury, so we um, moved uh, Rebecca Miller back to third, who hasn't got a lot of reps there in the preseason, yeah. even though she's played there in the past. Uh, and uh, you know, we we were still able to kind of you know keep ourselves in ball games, and uh, we're right there. Um, all but the USCB game, yeah. we kind of let the wheels fall off that game. Uh, I think it ended up being nine to two, but. Um, you know, even with the airs, we were still able to kind of push through some stuff. But, you know, some of that is communication. Uh, some of that is, you know, lack of, of being focused and kind of learning uh, with the pace of the game. And But I felt like uh, all of it is, is, fi is fixable and correctable. And, you know, we worked hard yesterday defensively. Uh, I think we were out there for, for several hours just working on a few things and putting them in a little bit tougher situations. And uh, hopefully we'll see much improvement in that area. You talk about some of those young players, Maya Otteridge, Tori Humphrey, uh, the first ones that come to mind. They got some um, a key playing time this weekend and started left field, third base. And then... Uh, but you talk about some of those younger players that have come up through the program. Uh, you, you're not, you don't usually go out and get a lot of transfers. You may get one or two here and there, but usually not a lot of transfers. You can grow the, these players, these freshmen, into being uh, Victoria Decker, who is the all-time the, the best pitcher to ever come through the program, or a Bailey Dillinger, or somebody like that. That, uh, but you, you've had success growing these freshmen up to their senior year, and they've had they've had, they've had great success. You know, we we usually try to go out and recruit some of the best players in the state of Kentucky and. Uh, some that are out of state, but um, you know, we we definitely have never shied away from playing freshmen. I think you know we're going to try and put the best nine kids on the field that are going to give us opportunity to be as successful as we can. Uh, and sometimes that comes with some growing pains along the way. 
and uh, that's okay too. But, um, you know, I think um, we were one of the top two to three teams there. Yeah. Um, perhaps not record-wise the way we wanted it to end, but, um, you know, we learned a lot about ourselves this weekend, and that's the most important thing. Oh, uh, one positive, Jacqueline Roof, she was 11 for 20 on the weekend. Uh, ended up hitting 545, named the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week. Uh, Jacqueline, the Player of the Year last year in the conference. Uh, she Obviously, we know what she can do with the bat. She's really solid up the middle at shortstop. Uh, uh, but she's the, at the leadoff position. She's been the leader that you needed the last couple of years. Jack really sets the tone for us. Um, you know, she's just a solid kid. And, uh, you know, I, I think the sky's the limit for her. I think, uh, you know, she had outstanding numbers last season. And uh, I think... Um, she, she can play and, and do even more and have a better year this year. And, uh, you know, I think uh, she's a hard worker. She comes, she has a great background with her, with her work ethic, with her dad and her brothers, and comes from a great high school program yeah. at McCracken County. And, um, you know, she just, um, you know, the sky's the limit for her. And we keep pushing her and out of trying to get her out of her comfort zone a little bit. Uh, but she's growing into, you know, a little bit more of a leadership role. And, um, you know, she just is, is solid at the plate and defensively for us. And lastly, really quick, uh, the, you have your first home games this weekend. Friday and Saturday is what it's scheduled for. A uh, 1 p.m. game on Friday with Taylor University, 12 p.m. with Olivet Nazarene on Saturday. Hopefully the weather can hold off. I know it's supposed to be a little rainy, a little bit colder this weekend than, than what you all were accustomed to last weekend with the nice weather in South Carolina. But uh, going into this weekend, it, it's, it's great to get back home, play a few home games, and, and not have to travel as well. You know, it's nice to be able to get home games in February, especially. Yeah. Uh, we've got two teams that want to come down from, you know, Indiana and Illinois, and um, hopefully we can get out in front of the home crowd. We had a we had a great crowd that traveled with us to South Carolina this weekend, but hopefully we can get on our own field and, and get a couple games in this weekend. So we're looking forward to getting back on the dirt and correcting a few things and, uh, you know, just kind of putting our best foot forward and growing and getting a little bit better every day. Well, Coach, uh, we hope to have you on next week, talk about uh, Tiger, Lady Tiger softball and also Tiger baseball going forward in the spring. Uh, we appreciate the time and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Once again, the Lady Tigers, they host Taylor University on Friday, first pitch at 1 p.m. You can follow that ball game right here on 88.7 The Tiger and the TuneIn Radio app by searching WLCU. Also on Saturday, the ball game can be sure, will be found on canvaswithtigers.com with live video and live stat links. Once again, we want to thank Brent Vernon, Coach Colvin, and also Coach Walfin for stopping by this week. So once again, uh, next week we'll be on Wednesday night, 6 p.m. right here, same day, same time. You've been following Inside CU Sports. champion doesn't get days off. It takes determination and drive to realize goals. From long nights to early mornings. From the courts to the classrooms to online. At Campbellsville University, this is why we play. This is how we learn. This is where champions are made. Find your calling for a life change at campbellsville.edu. Whether you're two or 102, the Tigerville Grill has something for you. Take advantage of the Build Your Own Burger menu. In the mood for something small? Choose one of the many delicious slider options. Call ahead and use our fast and easy drive through Oh, that cool freestyle fountain drink machine? We've still got it. The Tigerville Grill, located at 314 North Columbia Avenue and open to the public 11 to 8 daily. As the city of Campbellsville prepares to celebrate its bicentennial, Taylor County Bank celebrates 80 years of being locally owned and operated. Taylor County Bank offers many convenient features such as mobile banking and online bill pay. Should anything happen to your debit card, Taylor County Bank provides instant disabling of the card. They also offer a number of design options to show your local pride. Taylor County Bank, with multiple Campbellsville locations and online at taylorcountybank.com. Here at Saloma Baptist Church, our mission and ministry extend beyond our walls. We are focused on teaching all ages about the love of Jesus and preparing them for a life of mission. We are committed to serving the local community and the world in the name of Jesus Christ. For more information on service times and mission opportunities, visit our website at salomabaptist.com. 
We extend a warm welcome to you and your family here at Saloma Baptist Church.